I am attorney Mary Chris Batan Lasco. This is my virtual classroom. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this channel, I shall aim to simplify the law. I will discuss concepts and principles of law in under 10 minutes. Hello everyone. Let's talk about alternative obligations. So what is an alternative obligation? An alternative obligation is an obligation where there are several objects or prestations that are due, but it may be complied with by the fulfillment of one object that is due or one prestation that is due. What do we mean? By this. So, for example, Betty obliged herself to deliver either a particular car worth 300,000 pesos or cash of 300,000 pesos or a diamond ring worth 300,000 pesos. So, here you have an obligation where several prestations or objects are do. Either she may deliver the car, that particular car worth 300,000 pesos or cash worth 300,000 pesos or the particular diamond ring also worth 300,000 pesos. So three objects are due. However, the delivery of either of those objects would be enough to comply with the obligation. That is what is meant by an alternative obligation, where there are several objects that are due, but it is enough that only one is being delivered to fulfill the obligation. In that example, can Betty choose to deliver 150,000 pesos cash and also a car, a second-hand car worth 150,000, equaling still the value um, of 300,000 pesos? The answer is no. And we find the legal basis for that under Article 1199 of your Civil Code. Let's look at Article 1199. It says, a person alternatively bound by different prestations shall completely perform one of them. The creditor cannot be compelled to receive part of one and part of the other undertaking. So in our example, Betty cannot compel the creditor to receive 150,000 cash and the 150,000 car because the law says that it should be the delivery of either one of the prestations or objects that are due. It cannot be part of one and a part of another. That is Article 1199. Of course, if the creditor would agree or would accept to receiving a part of one undertaking and a part of another, then that there would be no problem with respect to that. However, what the law tells you is that the debtor, in our example, Betty, cannot compel the creditor to receive a part of one and a part of the other because the obligation of Betty is that she should deliver either of the three that she has promised. And that is basically what an, al an alternative obligation is all about. Now, who has the right to choose which prestation will be fulfilled or which object will be delivered by the debtor? The law tells you that the right of choice belongs to the debtor. That is found under Article 1200 of your Civil Code. It says, the right of choice belongs to the debtor unless it has been expressly granted to the creditor. The debtor shall have no right to choose those prestations which are impossible, unlawful, or which could not have been the object of the obligation. So in our previous example, Betty has now the right to choose which of the prestations she will fulfill, 
either she will deliver that particular car worth 300,000 or she will deliver the 300,000 cash or if she will deliver the 300,000 peso worth um, diamond ring. So again, the general rule is the debtor has the right of choice. Unless, of course, if they have agreed that the creditor will have the right to choose from which prestations he will be asking the debtor to deliver. Now, let's talk about that second paragraph of Article 1200, where the law says that, yes, the debtor has the right of choice, but he cannot choose those prestations which are impossible or which are unlawful or which could not have been the object of the obligation. So let me give you an example. So for example, again, Betty obliged herself to deliver either a particular car or a particular diamond ring or one kilo of dangerous drugs or of shabu. Now here you have three prestations or three objects that are due. While Betty may have the right to choose which of the three I mentioned that she will deliver, the law does not allow her to choose the last prestation or the last object that is due, and that is the one kilo of shabu. Why? Because that is unlawful. So again, yes, the debtor has the right of choice, but the debtor cannot choose those prestations that are impossible, that are unlawful, or which could not have been the object of the obligation. Now, when does that choice have any effect? It is only when the debtor has communicated such choice to the creditor. And that is Article 1201 of your Civil Code, where it says, the choice shall produce no effect except from the time it has been communicated. Now, is there a particular form of communication of the choice? There is no particular form. It could be in writing. It could be done verbally so long as the debtor has communicated or has informed the creditor of his choice as to what prestation or as to what object he has chosen to deliver to fulfill his obligation. Now, how about Articles 1202, 1203, 1204, and 1205? What are these articles about under the chapter on alternative obligations? These articles actually talk about scenarios where there are several prestations that are due, but one or two or more of these prestations are no longer practicable to be delivered. So how do we go about these situations? Now, when you read Articles 1202 to 1205, it may seem confusing, but actually these articles are very simple when we put them in a diagram. So I am now showing to you a diagram that would make you better understand and make you better remember the concepts or the principles under Articles 1202 to 1205. So take a look at this first diagram I am showing you. Above, it says that the right of choice belongs to the debtor. Because if you can remember earlier, I said the general rule is the right of choice belongs to the debtor unless they agree that the right of choice will belong to the creditor. So this diagram, let's focus first on when the right of choice belongs to the debtor. So, loss of some or of one of the objects or of all of the objects in an alternative obligation can cost either by a fortuitous event or it could be caused by the fault or negligence of the debtor. So, what would be the consequence or the consequences if the loss is caused by a fortuitous event or the loss is caused by the fault or negligence of the debtor? So, look at the diagram. If all of the objects are lost, lost rather, 
and it is caused by a fortuitous event. What happens to the obligation of the debtor? The obligation of the debtor is extinguished. So if, for example, Betty promised to deliver a particular car or a particular motorcycle, if that particular car and that particular motorcycle are all lost due to a typhoon, which is a fortuitous event, and it is destroyed beyond repair, then the obligation of Betty is extinguished. Now, what if only one or some of the objects are lost due to a fortuitous event? What happens now? The debtor will still choose from the remainder or from the remaining objects. So, for example, if Betty has promised to deliver either a particular car or a particular motorcycle or a particular yacht, and let's say the yacht was destroyed by a super typhoon and you still have the, that particular car and the particular motorcycle, since the loss of the yacht is due to a fortuitous event, then Betty can still choose from what remains. And so Betty can still choose either to deliver that particular car or the particular motorcycle. Now, supposing in that example, what was destroyed by the typhoon would be the yacht and the car. And so there is still the motorcycle. And so this now is converted into a simple obligation because then Betty will have no choice but to deliver what is left, and that is the motorcycle. So those are the consequences if there is loss of one of the objects or of some of the objects or of all of the objects, and the loss is caused by a fortuitous events. Now, how about if the loss of one of the objects or of some of the objects or of all of the objects, what if the loss is caused by the fault or negligence of the debtor? Again, we are still on the right of choice belonging to the debtor. So what are the consequences? If all of the objects are lost, Due to the fault or negligence of the debtor, what happens? Your obligation is not extinguished, uh, unlike when the loss is due to a fortuitous event. Because again, remember, this is caused by the fault or negligence of the debtor. The obligation, however, is converted to a monetary liability. It is now converted into such because all of the objects are lost. Now, how do you put a value to the liability since it's now a monetary liability? It shall be the value of the object which last disappeared. Why? Since it is the right, or rather since the right of choice belongs to the debtor, so even if the debtor has destroyed one of the objects that are due, he will always have the remainder to choose from. So if we go back to the example we had earlier, the choice between a particular car, a particular motorcycle, or a particular yacht, even if the particular car was lost due to the recklessness of the debtor, since the right of choice belongs to him, he always has the two other two to choose from, the particular yacht or the particular motorcycle. And even if, again, the motorcycle would be lost due to his fault or negligence, he will always have the yacht to deliver. And so if, again, the yacht is lost due to his fault or negligence, then he could have had delivered that. And so the value of the monetary liability should be pegged at the value of the object which last 
disappear. That is the reason for the law under Articles 1202 to 1205. Of course, since the loss of all the objects are due to the fault or negligence of the debtor, your creditor can claim damages. Now, if only one or some of the objects that are due were lost due to the fault or negligence of the debtor, as I've mentioned already earlier, your debtor can choose from what remains. Just like what we said earlier, if the particular car is lost due to his recklessness, he can always choose from the particular motorcycle or the particular yacht. He can choose either of the two to deliver. If there's only one that remains because all the others were lost due to his fault or negligence, then that, um, that one that has remained will now be the object that will be delivered. So these are the rules under Articles 1202 to 1205 if there is loss and the right of choice belongs to the debtor. Now, how about if there is loss but the right of choice belongs to the creditor because they agreed that it shall belong to the creditor? Would the consequences be the same? No, the consequences are not all the same. There are some that are similar, but there are also scenarios that are different from the rules that we just discussed earlier. So I'm now showing to you a diagram. For the consequences of loss, where the right of choice belongs to the creditor. So again, the loss can be caused by a fortuitous event or by the fault or negligence of the debtor. So let's take a look at when loss is caused by a fortuitous event. If all of the objects are lost, lost rather, due to a fortuitous event, then the obligation is extinguished. Because again, as we said, loss that is caused by a fortuitous event will extinguish an obligation because it is not the debtor's fault that the prestations are lost. Now, if one or some of the objects are lost due to a fortuitous event, what happens now? The creditor can still choose from the remainder or the creditor can choose from what remains because he has the right of choice. So again, we go back to our examples. If the prestations that are due are that particular car, the particular motorcycle, and a particular yacht. If the, the particular yacht gets uh, lost or gets wrecked due to a typhoon, then the creditor can choose from either the motorcycle or the car. So the difference now is just the one who is choosing which prestation is to be delivered. This time, it's your creditor who will choose because they have agreed that the creditor will have the right of choice. If some of the prestations are lost and only one, and only one remains, then of course, it will be converted into a simple obligation. And therefore, that will be the one which will be delivered by the debtor to the creditor. So going back to our example, if the particular car and the particular motorcycle are lost, perhaps due to an earthquake, then you have just the particular yacht that can be delivered. So it's converted into a simple obligation. Now, if the loss is due to the fault or negligence of the debtor, what will happen now? What would be the consequences? If all of the objects are lost due to the fault or negligence of the debtor, then the creditor can choose any of the objects and have the debtor pay for the value of the object that he has chosen. So in our example again, the particular car, the particular motorcycle, and the particular yacht. The creditor can choose from any of the object, and whatever object that he has chosen, the debtor will have to pay him the value of such 
object. Now, what if not all of the objects are lost due to the fault or negligence of the debtor? Since the right of choice belongs to the creditor, then he can choose still any of the objects. If, however, the object chosen was already lost due to the fault or negligence of the debtor, then he will be paid the value of such object plus damages. However, if the creditor chooses the object that is still not lost, it, it is still there, it still exists, then he, the, the debtor will deliver such object. Will the debtor be liable for damages? The answer is no. Why? Because he has chosen the object that still exists, that is not lost. So that's basically what 1202 to 1205 is telling you. Now, remember that these rules on loss apply to particular things or to specific things because generic things are never lost. And so these rules apply to specific things. So if there are prestations that are generic and there are prestations that are specific, then the specific things may be lost, but there will always be a generic thing that would remain. For example, if the prestations that are due would be a particular diamond ring or a particular car and one million cash. So even if the two prestations are lost, the particular diamond ring and the particular car, even if it is lost due to a fortuitous event, the obligation is not extinguished because you have a generic thing that is due. If it is caused also by the fault or negligence of the debtor, again, there is always still one prestation that is left to be chosen from. Either it be the choice of the debtor or the creditor. So remember that the rules under Articles 1202 to 1205, and we're talking about loss, that applies only to specific things. So that ends our discussion on alternative obligations. I hope that I have made it simple for all of you. I will see you in the next video. So if you find this video helpful, please click like, subscribe, and that notification bell so that you will be notified of new video uploads. Thank you for watching. See you next time in MBL Classroom.